Slendy, hey go, Slendy, hey. Hit it up the park, hit it with a strike. From the national anthem to the bottom of the night. I'm in Slendy, hey go, Slendy, hey go, Slendy, hey go, Slendy, hey. You already know what's up. What's that? Another home run. But you know the job ain't done. Till we hold that trophy up. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 404 of the Talking Friars podcast and YouTube show. It is May 28th, 2023. Sunday afternoon here, the Padres, they just dropped two out of three to the New York Yankees. They have lost six series in their last seven series played. That one series win happened in the nation's capital against the Washington Nationals. Uh, you know, I was just thinking as I was coming on here, listening to the intro song, Joe Dreams, man, I might have to start playing a remix of that song or something because I, it's not Slam Diego. It's it's more like Strand Diego this year with the runners in scoring position. Uh, and right now, it's just – I don't know how you can have that much confidence right now as a Padres fan. Level of concern, like I'll just throw that out there right now just to start. Like, let me know in the chat your level of concern on a scale of one to 10 for this Padres team right now. Um, right now, I would say I'm at around like a five in terms of their, my concern level of them making the postseason. Like one being the least concerned, 10 being the most concerned. I put that out on social media and I got some varying responses. Um, some were saying that they're not concerned. Some are like a 10 or a 300. Some saying they won't finish 500 and have to retool a $250 million payroll. Not giving up on the team just yet. Full panic mode. So, some saying zero. Still not concerned. 10. Preller's got to go. So there, it's varying. You know, some some are being optimistic and some are, yeah, no, we're in full panic mode. This team isn't going anywhere. This team isn't going to make the playoffs. Might have to fire AJ. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, like me, I'm pissed off, obviously, about how the team's playing. And for right now, like my short-term concern, yeah, it would be higher than a five. But long-term, I just realized that it is a long season. I'm not going to sit here and say it's early because it's not. We're almost at Memorial Day, right? Memorial Day is tomorrow. That's like the point where a lot of baseball people, right, they look at the teams and, all right, you got a pretty good sense of what this team is. And right now, what is this Padres team? Like how would we assess this Padres team right now as we're almost at Memorial Day here? You assess it by saying, well, they're not a good enough team to make the postseason if they keep playing like this, right? Letter grade, A to F, I mean, based on expectations, you'd probably have to give this Padres team an F. And I hate to say that, but the offense has not been what we expected it to be. Manny has not been good. I know he was he's on the IL now. Uh, Bogarts has not been as good compared to the start that he had. Um, Juan Soto got off to that slow start, right? Matt Carpenter, Nelson Cruz, getting like nothing out of the DH spots right now. That's what it feels like. Jake Cronenworth got off to a slow start this season. And the record is 24-29. and 29. They're in fourth place in the National League West. Based on the expectations you got to give this team an F, right? The starting pitching, I think, for the most part, it's been pretty good. The bullpen has been pretty good. But at the end of the day, the grade is not just based on the pitching only. The grade is based on the team as a whole. And the offense is a huge part of that. And the offense was a huge reason why a lot of people around baseball, a lot of these baseball experts were saying that, yeah, the Padres, they're the team to beat in the national league West go win, you know, they should go win the world series or predicting them to even over teams like the Astros or getting there over teams like the Braves or 
the Phillies or the Dodgers, right, or the Mets. We're not seeing that World Series caliber offense so far this season. And again, it's not early. I think it's you, you could say a couple things. It's not early, but there's still a lot of the season left. And I say that there's a lot of the season left from the optimistic view and like still believing in the back of the baseball cards, but the back of the baseball card for this year, if, you know, 2023 baseball cards from tops were to be sent out tomorrow and you have the 2023 average and on base percentage and all that under some of these hitters doesn't look great. So I I don't blame you if you, are at the highest level of concern. That's not who I am. Like I'm not, unless it's, you know, we're in post trade deadline and it's like, Oh, Padres, they're really far back in the division. They're not in a good spot for a wild card spot. Like for me right now with this Padres team, like they obviously need to make the postseason, And if they don't want to round in the postseason, I think you really got to say that this year was a failure, right? Um, definitely disappointing, underwhelming. And so far to start the year, there's a long way to go, obviously. So far, what would we label this season? We label it very disappointing, right? So again, if it continues this way, then that's how we're going to be labeling it at the end as well. And maybe some change will have to be made. Um, but yeah, right now, my concern level long term, you know, postseason wise, it's it's like a five. Like I'm concerned, but I know it's a long season, and I still believe in most of the players that are on the roster. There's exceptions, obviously, but I believe in the the core talent that AJ Preller has acquired. That that's just how I feel about it. Let me see how some of you feel in the chat. Um. By the way, if you want to support the channel, make sure I get to your comment. You can use that super chat button. If you want to join the show, give your thoughts. What is your concern level at? Feel free to click that link that is pinned up at the top of the chat. Love communicating, talking with Padres fans. Yeah, I'll get to this series. I'm going to get to this series here in a moment. I see some comments. Why did we keep you Darvish in today? Uh, blame Bowmel for not pulling you after like four or five runs. Yeah, and today. You know, obviously, we'll talk about today's game here in a second. The offense scored seven runs today. That should be enough. That should definitely be enough. On a day that Garrett Cole starts, he scores seven runs. That's not what I was expecting, especially after Juan Soto gets scratched. So, yeah, that should be enough. And today, it's on the pitching. That's for sure. I know one for, what, seven with runners in scoring position. That doesn't look great. That's still a big part of the Padres' struggles. But... The starting pitching with Darvish today was a big issue. And then when they came back, you know, Honeywell giving up some runs. So, yeah, it was not not great from the pitching side of things today. Tupac13 says a 6, level of concern 1 to 10. Okay. Steve says Preller has failed. I don't think he's failed yet. Um, there's a long – it's a long season. It's not, it's, it has not gotten off to a good start, obviously. That's for sure. This season has not gotten, it's gotten off to a start that we weren't even imagining, right? We weren't, was any Padres fans imagining, you know, before opening day even started, like the morning of opening day? Were you imagining this Padres team will be, imagine if this Padres team's under 500? We, I don't even think that was in our thoughts, right? Because we thought this team was going to be, Maybe the best regular season team in Padres history. Maybe win 100 games. Um, we were thinking about World Series maybe even, right? We thought this team was going to be really good. And they still can be, obviously, when it matters most at the end. But if you want to be there at the end, right, you want to be in the postseason, you can't be losing six or seven series anymore because you're just going to keep digging a deeper hole and forget the division you keep doing that, right? Forget that. And you're going to be scrapping just to, to make the wild card. I'm not even going to look at the, the standings right now because it's still May, May 28th. I probably don't even want to look at the standings until like trade deadline. Uh, 
But for anyone that will look at the standings, look at the wild card, you'll probably put it in the chat and I'll probably see it. Like how many games back are the Padres of a playoff spot? I don't even know if they're in a playoff spot right now. I'm just solely focused on the Padres and their record just because, you know, we're, we're still sitting in May. But, you know, Steve, I would not say Preller has failed yet. Matt says, I'm optimistic now. You're all too negative. Brent is at a seven. Roster needs to be improved. Yeah, I, I agree on that. Steve would give this season so far an F. I mean, yeah, how could you not, right? Steve's concern level 10 plus. Yeah, I, I don't think Steve represents the majority of the fan base that is like full panic. Because I assume those that are at that concern level, like 10, you don't think this team's going to make the playoffs. You think this team's going to finish below 500. That's what you think, right? And I'm not at that. Definitely not at that. I'm, I'm far away from that. All right, I'll get to the rest of the chat here in a bit. Well, let's go through these games in this series. Padres, they lose today. 10-7 to the Yanks. Again, you score seven runs, and it's a Garrett Cole day for the Yankees. You should expect to win that game. You have Darvish on the mound, who is one of your aces. You, You need to win that game. And today, the Padres did not win this game. Darvish in that third inning. So he gives up the homer to Judge after Crony hit the home run in the first. That tied it up, right? Then he gives up five consecutive hits in the third inning. Six earned runs total. Offense battled back, which was good to see. Like they kept fighting. Odor homered uh, to right in the second deck. But at the end of the day, After Darvish gave up all those runs, he didn't feel like they really had a chance. And then Brent Honeywell comes in, gives up more runs there. And it was like, okay, they got back in the game and then gave it up more and made it even harder. You know, how many chances are you going to give away, right? Like how many or how many chances, I should say it this way, how many chances are that Padres offense going to have, right? They get you back in the game, but then you give it away again, like, Sorry, when the pitching's that bad, the offense, they're probably the baseball gods aren't going to give you uh, another opportunity to go win the game again when another pitcher blows up, right? So if we go through, like, I haven't seen the Darvish post game quotes or anything like that, and I'm sure I'll pl- I'll play Bo Mel speaking to the media here in a little bit, but yeah, this third inning it was rough. I mean. There were some pitches, like I said on my post-game reaction, there were some pitches where Darvish it looked like he made an okay pitch, like the ball was down in the zone, okay, and they just did something with it. They found a hole. By the way, it felt like they found every single hole in that third inning. Grish made a tremendous catch, uh, robbing that DJ LeMahieu home run, but then I believe those two runs that were on base still ended up scoring, so he only saved one run there. So, you know, it was a great catch, but... It's not like Darvish turned it around there, right? Or the pitching turned it around there and was able to get out of the inning there. Um, But yeah, third inning, Darvish, he was just leaving pitches over the plate, hanging over the plate. That's what I saw. Scan was talking about that on the broad. I think it was Scan or maybe it was Mud. Just talking about that on the broadcast where they were going through the swings. The, uh, The third inning, Higashioka with the double down the line. Volpe with the single, made it 3-2 Padres. Torres singles, Judge singles through the 5-5. Rizzo with a sharp single, right? He's hanging over the plate. Darvish isn't going to pitch inside there. Ball hangs over the plate. And uh, Rizzo smacks it past, was it Crane at second? Or no, I think it was Odor. Gives Gives the Yankees the lead. Grish robs the home run. Uh, Judge gets to third. Another one scores. Pretty hard hit ball by Harrison Bader. Bader reaches base. Steals second. Calhoun doubles uh, to center. Bader scores. Then about 6-3 Yankees. 
And Carlton comes in, gives up another run. Uh, that was the IKF single, but that was Darvish's run. Uh, Calhoun scored because Darvish obviously gave up the, the double to Calhoun. It was just batting practice. I mean, it was one after the other after the other. And I'm like, okay, when is this going to end? And the only break, like, like the Padres got, I know Grish getting, you know, robbing that home run, but again, runs still scored after that. The runners that were on base there. The one break they got was Higashioka, the double off the wall, right? It hits the top of the wall, comes back in, runs still scored, but they got the break there instead of the ball going over the wall, but just nothing, nothing. Just all the balls found a hole. And it felt like if the Padres were going to put those swings on the ball, it just felt like, no, they'd probably find a glove, probably find someone, right? It'll be hit to someone. But the Padres, that's just the way things are going right now, it feels like, is bad. You know the, you know the Kansas City series where I think it was the last game of the series, right? There was the pass ball or the wild pitch. Ball gets to the backstop. Instead of taking a bad bounce off the wall and sort of scoring, it ends up going right back to Salvi and Soto gets tagged out. Like those little things, just things aren't going right for the Padres. They went right uh, in that series finale against the Nats, right? Odor has that home run. Uh, it's like, all right, vibes are great going into this Yankee series. And then they went on Friday. It's like, all right, let's go. Keep it going here. But then, so, you know, took a step forward there. The National Series, that Yankee first game on Friday. But then they take a step back. Then we're right back where the Padres were um, going into this road trip, right? Took two out of three, but then lost two out of three. And so now they're still five games under 500 and in fourth in the NL West. And again, I'm not looking at the standings. I'm just looking on MLB.com, and it says the record and where they stand in the division right there. So. To me, I'm not going to be looking at the at the division or the wild card right now. I'm just focused on the struggles of this Padres team. But yeah, it was like batting practice in this third inning. It really was. And you know, Soto he did not play right. He or he didn't start the game. He did pinch hit in the ninth inning. He was scratched. It was a late scratch too, due to what back tightness. And he grounded out in that one at bat. Uh, force play, he reached base. And then Tatis with Soto on base, grounded out to end the game. Um, you know, the offense, they kept fighting. But again, like, I don't want to focus on the offense too much here in t- for today's game because they scored seven runs against the Yankees. Seven runs on a day that Garrett Cole pitched. Like, those are games, like, you got to win those games. And the pitching just was not good enough today. Specifically Darvish, obviously. Should we be concerned long-term about Darvish? I'm not at that point. Maybe some are. Yeah, but yeah, I see Preston's comment. Darvish blew the game. What else can we be mad about? Like, Garrett Cole, he's had bad outings, right? Uh, Earlier this year, right? Yankees had a 5-0 lead for him, and they lost that game because Cole stunk it up later in that outing. Darvish, every pitcher is going to have something not going to have a good outing, not going to have a few good outings in the season, right? Remember Darvish had that real clunker. I think it was in San Francisco last year, right? And he ended up being fine. So unless it's this happens to be a string of starts for Darvish, then I can start to get more concerned. But for me today with Darvish, it was mislocation, really. And I still think he's an ace guy. I don't think he's like a top five pitcher in baseball, but he's still an ace guy. I mean, look at the game logs this year. So gave up five runs, okay, against the Mets. But the outings in between those, right? First outing of the year, one earned run. Third outing of the year, one earned run. Fourth outing of the year, one earned run. Gave up four runs against the Giants April 30th. But then right back to allowing just one run, two runs to start after that uh, against the twins. Right. Like it's not like it's a bad stretch of starts. That's not what it feels like. So I'm not there with Darvish yet. I'm not there with him yet. 
is there anyone like for me, there's no one in this rotation that sticks out where I'm like, I'm worried about them. Waka, obviously not the way he's pitched in the month of May. Darvish, like I said, not yet. Musgrove had a good start this time around, right? Um, Lugo's on the IL. We'll see what Weathers does in that first game against the Marlins. Snell, he, I think he's been pitching better since uh, obviously the first first three, four starts of the season. You look at his game logs. Last time out, five innings, only gave up one run, you know, against the Nats. Got out of a couple bases loaded situations. Um, I know he gave up six runs against Boston the outing before that, but the couple outings before that, six inning, two run starts. So there's no one that I'm like hitting the panic button on in the rotation. It just feels like in the first week or the last, excuse me, last week, week and a half, right? Maybe the pitching hasn't been as reliable. Maybe it's even been more than that, but it hasn't been that reliable. But there's no one where I'm sitting there like, yeah, I'm, I'm really worried about this guy. Like, can't ret- can't trust this guy. Um, it's a long season. It's a long season. And bullpen wise, like, I kind of feel the same th- same way about like Nick Martinez. I know he's had some rough outing here as of late. Not super worried about him. I know who he is, you know, as a competitor. And you look at the sample size with in the bullpen, like he has been really good. So I'm not hitting the panic button there. Maybe there's some other relievers that I'm forgetting about that you can point out there in the chat that I'd hit the panic button on. But um, as a whole, I think the panic button should, if you're going to press the panic button, it should be on the offense. I think because they've had, they have not been good this whole season you know, as, as a whole. Right. Um, and Saturday's game losing three to two. What was their runners in scoring position on Saturday? One for six. Yeah. So not great. But Saturday, like that was another close game. You know, the pitching was uh, pitching pitch fine. Uh, you know, Nick Martinez pitched those three innings out of the pen. Michael Waka, seven innings, gave up two earned runs. Martinez's run, by the way, wasn't even an earned run because it was in extra innings, right, in that 10th inning. But, like, the pitching was fine. It came down to who was going to come through with the big hit. Was it the Yankees or was it going to be the Padres? And the Yankees ended up coming up with that hit uh, in extra innings there with runners in scoring position yesterday. It was an interesting lineup for sure. And I know that there's some fans that are going to sit there and complain about, oh, the lineup's not consistent. What, what's with these different lineups every day? But my thoughts on that is like, Bo Milk, doesn't he have to do that the way that this team is constructed right now? He's trying to find the right DH. Both guys are struggling so far this year. Um, Cruz got out to a good start, right? But he's cooled down. Bogarts, he was out yesterday, so there's one less star in there. Manny's out. Uh, Kim just got brought back, yet because he didn't play Friday. Just got brought back Saturday. Um, you know, Odor leading off. Some didn't like that, but who who are they going to go to in that spot? You want Tatis leading off? Well, I, I thought some fans wanted Tatis hitting second or third. Soto, obviously, you're going to have him hit second or third, when, especially when Bogarts and Manny aren't in there. Um, and when the stars aren't in there, right, now you have your, your depth guys that have to play, and you're, you're looking at the bottom of the lineup, and we can't be surprised if there's no production there. The bottom of the lineup last night, or yesterday, excuse me, Sullivan, Kim, Grisham, and Cruz, and Dixon you can throw in there. I mean, Brandon Dixon was hitting fifth in that lineup yesterday. And part of that's the depth. Part of that's injuries. Um, so Dixon, Cruz, Grisham, Kim, and Sullivan combined to go one for what? One for six, nine, 11, six, uh, 15 at-bats there between them. One for 15 between them. And, and Severino was pitching really well, but 
you got to get something out of the bottom of the order at some point here, right? And the catching position, we know what it is. You know, Nola hitting like 130, Sullivan hitting under 200, uh, Matt Carpenter, his average is not pretty, Grish hitting under 200. Like, we know what the bottom of the lineup is, but they still got to produce at some point. I, I don't, heavy is the head that wears the crown. I know I, I say that, but when you have injuries, well, now the bottom of the lineup, or not just the bottom of the lineup, but just the other guys that are filling in, they have to hold some of that burden too because they're the ones that are replacing the star player, you know? And so, yeah, part of this is Preller, you know, you know, not having the best bench. But when you have a top-heavy roster, at least position player-wise, this is what's going to happen. And right now, some guys are hurt. Some guys are playing through injury. So you're not just getting the you're just not getting the best performance out of some of these stars, and so should we be that surprised about the offensive production here? I don't really think so. It, it's obviously frustrating. Mike says you can get away with a staff like this for the regular season, but no way in hell is this a playoff caliber pitching staff i don't know about that yet i don't know it's almost the same rotation as last year in the postseason right and that's the nlcs last year it's a lot of the same bullpen guys right they got to the nlcs last year matt says brandon dixon hitting fifth well 273 just doesn't buy what it used to. Yeah, I mean, well, 273 does. I mean, look at, I get your point, but look at the roster going into the season. You know, Manny, Soto, Tatis, Bogarts. What GM didn't want that? They'd love to have that, right? That comes down to the players. I think, G, I think a GM would take having those superstar players in there if that meant, well, okay, the bench isn't going to be that strong. Because what wins you those championships? What gets you to those postseason appearances, right? Is it the bench guys? No. Bench guys aren't going to be playing every day. It's the guys that play every day. Ivory, I see your super chat. I'll get to that here in a little bit. Just going over these games from this series. Doing this on my phone now because my internet just pooped out, so... Apologies there. Where was I? I think I was talking about game two of this series. Hopefully the audio is not going to be terrible. Uh, okay, so I think I was talking about game two of this series. So Waka, bumpy outing, but then he bounced back, right? Um, what else do I have in my notes here? Sorry, I totally... This internet, man. It's been... I couldn't clip highlights at the beginning of today's game because the internet wasn't working and now it just pooped out. So hopefully my phone's fine here. Okay. Pedro says I'm good. All right. Good. So we're talking about Garcia, right? 15 day IL. So um, what's his name? Uh, Domingo Tapia. He just got called up. And he'll probably be like the last guy on in the bullpen. Um, you know, Severino on the other side of things, he was really good. Retired 10 straight before that Tatis home run. You know, there were there were some big swings from the Padres in this game, but they didn't come through with runners in scoring position in extra innings, right? Like that was the big thing yesterday. Um, you know, top of the eighth. Before extra innings, Dixon as the five hitter grounded out with runners in scoring position. And that's the little thing. Like if, if Manny was healthy, if Crony was there, um, maybe Crony's hitting fifth or whatever, right? But in this spot, you have Brandon Dixon hitting fifth. Sorry, Brandon Dixon. I'm just not going to, I don't have a whole lot of faith in you right now. Um, and 
I don't think the Padres do really. So that's just the way it went. Um, uh, going into yesterday with that lineup, you got to sit there and be like, well, okay, do we really have that great of a chance of taking this game or having the offense be the reason why we win this game with the lineup that was thrown out there? Let me see here. Uh, in game two, so yesterday, so Odor leading off, Tatis, Soto, Crony, Dixon, Nelson Cruz, Grisham, Kim, Sullivan. I mean, the bottom of the order there, right? We went through the amount of hits that the bottom of the order had, right? One. I mean, it was bad. You know, Nelson Cruz, after yesterday's game, now down to 245. I mean, the OPS is well below 700. It's just not the best lineup, right? And you're playing a Yankee team where they've been one of, if I'm not mistaken, they've been one of the better offensive teams this season. The Padres obviously have not. So, yeah, it was the runner in scoring position stuff, you know, going to extra innings, right? This was the big thing. I know a lot of fans were irritated uh, with Austin Nola pinch hitting. Austin Nola pinch hit for Brett Sullivan in that spot. And I agree, obviously looking at it in hindsight, like why is Austin Nola pinch hitting in that spot? And for me, I'm like, well, because they were trying to have a bunt. Like, didn't he, if I remember correctly, he tried to bunt his first two times up there. And didn't get him down. Rizzo standing like five feet from him. So with two strikes, they have him swing the bat. And it's a shallow pop-up. That, that's not going to do the job with, even with, what, a runner on, a runner was on third in that spot. Not going to do the job. So, yeah, it's just Nola not being able to execute. Um, and if you're going to have that, you know, Rizzo is that far in. Sullivan should just be out there. Why ha, does Sullivan not know how to bunt? Right? Like, and if Rizzo's right there, and even if Nola lays it down, is Nola, or excuse me, not Nola, is whoever was on third, I forget who it was, are they going to be able to beat the throw home? Are they going to be able to beat the throw to third? What was the situation there? I'm trying to remember what the situation was here. Let's see. Tenth inning. Yeah, Kim. Okay. Kim was on second. So Nola was trying to get the runner over to third. Is Kim going to make it to third there, even if Nola gets the bunt down? I think that's a valid question. Like, why is Nola catching in the, or why is he pinch hitting in that spot for Brett Sullivan? I don't get that. I don't get that. And this whole personal catcher thing with you, Darvish, I understand the relationship. Maybe, actually, maybe I don't because I'm not in there and I don't know everything that goes on. But I get that Darvish, he likes to be comfortable and all that. But at the same time, Nola isn't doing anything offensively. And Darvish, he's calling the pitches on Pitchcom himself. If you watch the broadcast, he's calling it on Pitchcom. Musgrove doesn't call his pitches very much. Uh, most of the pitching staff still has the catcher call the pitches on the pitch comp. Darvish calls the game. So if that's happening, why do they continue to have Nola catch for Darvish? It's not like he's putting down signs and all that. Like, let's have Sullivan catch Darvish one of these times. Why not? What can you lose? Another game? The Padres have already done that a lot, more than we would have expected this season. You know, why? Why not try it, right? You don't know if it's going to work out unless you try it. If it doesn't work out, then you can go back to Nola. But Brett Sullivan, I mean, look at the defensive plays that he made yesterday, right? The the pop-up got the umpire out of the way, made the catch at the net. That was tremendous. Threw out a runner later in that inning. 
Um, I'm not saying Brett Sullivan's this, you know, he's the best defensive catcher, but I think he's a better catching option just overall than Austin Nola. And to pinch, to have Austin Nola be up at the plate there, you're, he's not going in there for defense. No, you're putting him in there to go do a, to go get a, a bunt down. There's already a runner in scoring position. Let's just have Sullivan go up there at the plate. Because you know during a bunt, Rizzo's right there. So you get a bunt down. Again, is that runner going to go to third? I don't know about that. I think in that spot, Sullivan should have just been the one to stay in there. So I disagree with Bomo on that. Most of Bomo's decisions, I agree with. But that one, I I don't. Um, but, you know, even after that inning, I'm just looking here. Just as a uh, refresher, Odor. Called out on strikes. Tatis, uh, yeah, Tatis grounded out. Almost made it, but he was out. So not coming through. And then in the bottom of the 10th, Martinez going out there for the third inning. And, and yesterday, I said that I agreed with it. Like, yeah. And I still do. I still agreed with Nick Martinez going out there for the third. He'd pitch well. What I don't agree on was having... Martinez face IKF there in that spot. I initially, I, I might not have had this stance on my post game reaction the other day, but that's because I, for some reason, I thought there was a runner on first as well. So I thought that, oh, double play situation. Uh, maybe, you know, hey, he got the ground ball. It just didn't go the Padres' way. Right. But there was no runner on first base. He got the ground ball, but even if Kim would have, I think it was Kim at, or was it Odor? I forget who was at third. Would they have been able to throw the runner out at home in that spot after diving and making the play? Probably not. Uh, it's, it wasn't like it was a forced play. So, yeah, I think in that spot, you walk IKF. I know he has the, the high ground ball rate, but you walk him. You set up a double play ball. You set up a force out at home. And instead, or but instead you don't, and they end up walking it off there. So yeah, there were there were just some situations there where I didn't agree with the managerial decisions from Bowmill. Uh, but you know, if the offense would have been better, then maybe we wouldn't have even had to get to the tenth inning in that spot, right? So a disappointing loss. I thought that was a game they could have won. Where today, yeah, they bounced back. You know. I'm talking about the offense after Darvish gave up all those runs. The offense bounced back. They continued to battle, but I didn't. At least I didn't feel like they were going to win the game ever. When Darvish, at least once Darvish started to spiral there in that third inning, I didn't think they were going to win the game. Yesterday, I, I thought they could have won that game, and they ended up not being able to do it. And part of that was the offense, obviously, and that's going to continue to be a storyline. Moving to Friday's game, I guess that's a little happier thing, right? I mean, talking about the momentum, right? Padres, they win that series finale against the Nationals. They win Friday's game. It's all right. All right, we're making things happen. You know, three of the last four games that would have been, right? Because they took two out of three in Washington, took that Friday game. But then, oh, my phone might die here. It's that low battery. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the momentum. Like, they took a step forward, but then they take a step back, right? And we're right back where the Padres were before this road trip. Like I said earlier, you know, four games under 500. So, again, it's, it's hard to sit here and be happy and talk a whole lot about Friday's game because – that was on Friday. It feels like such a long time ago. And these last two games, you thought it was games that they could have won based on some certain things, right? Yesterday, if the offense would have come through, like the game was close there. Today, the offense scored seven runs. The pitching should have, I mean, the offense put you in a spot to win, should have won the game based on how many runs the offense scored, right? But they weren't able to get the series win. So yeah, it's frustrating um, that, Friday, they couldn't keep going off of Friday's win. 
but it you know five one five one win Musgrove pitched really well six and a third one earned run no walks uh, six hits allowed six punch outs should we expect that to continue I don't know about that like level of dominance six and a third only one run I don't know about that but I think that we can expect Musgrove to kind of turn that switch and start to start to pitch more like the Musgrove we saw most of last year. Um, I saw some encouraging things looking back, watching uh, the content, the condensed game on, I think it was the MLB app or wherever, the, wherever they have that, you know, location movement. And he was saying on the broadcast, I think yesterday when he was talking with Don and mud about how like, yeah, he, he's now starting to spend more time working on the field you know, working on stuff to improve upon instead of in the trainer's room, right? Because he was starting the season after the kettlebell accident, right? And having to deal with that. Then he had the turf incident, right? With the feet and he's had to deal with that. So now um, he start. it doesn't seem like he has any lagging, nagging injuries that he has to focus on. And now he can start to really just get better, start working on things that he needs to improve upon based on his last start, whenever his last start it is, right? After every start, looking at things to improve upon, go work on them in a bullpen session on the field. And it seems like he can start to do that now, where early in the year here, maybe he didn't have enough time to do that because, well, he had to be in the trainer's room just getting physically ready to be able to make this next start, right? But that was encouraging. Tatis homering, obviously. Soto homering. That was cool. Um, you know, that game felt like, all right, well, this is kind of like the blueprint, right? For the Padres. If, if the Padres want to be that like world series caliber team, then this is the game. We need to see a lot more of these games. We need to see the superstars perform. We need to see the starting pitching, have these types of performances, the bullpen be locked down. That's going to win you a lot of games. We have not seen that from the Padres consistently this year. Again, I think the starting pitching been so it's been okay. The bullpen's been pretty good. But the offense, we haven't seen the Friday night performance from the offense consistently this year. And until we see that, then the Padres, they're just not a good team. Right now they're they're just not a good team. They have that they have I think they have the potential, maybe with some more additions. I think they have the potential to be a good team, but right now, how can you say that they are? Right. So Friday, that was great. Thursday's comeback win. Cool. But they just took a step back with these last two games in the series. Right. That's frustrating. Um, you know, top five in the lineup on Friday. I wanted to, this was in my notes. I wanted to bring this up because top five in the lineup uh, in one of those Nats games, right? They went 0 for 17, I believe. Right. I think it was the middle game of that national series. They went 0 for 17. Top five in the lineup Friday, Tatis, Crony, Soto, Bogarts, and Odor combined for seven hits. Five runs driven in, four runs scored. That's some serious production from the top five in the order. That stuff right there, like that, you got to start seeing that more. We got to start seeing that more from the Padres offense. If the Padres want to get where they want to get to, where, where we think that they could get to, or at least that where we thought that they could get to going into the season, right? All right. Let's get to the, how do I, okay, this might be weird here. Again, I'm doing this on my phone if you're just tuning in here. So bear with me. This isn't very good to do on my phone. The screen's small. Everything else that I'm operating with here is even smaller. The internet just totally kicked me out on my laptop. So bear with me here. All right, I'm going to get to the chat after this break. Check out Gaglione Bros' famous cheesesteaks and garlic fries on Friars Road. You can visit their website, gaglionebros.com, for their entire menu and enjoy their cheesesteaks and fries at Petco Park and Snapdragon Stadium as well. Pedro says, Odor's raking. It's ultimately up to the top dogs to do their jobs every night. Stop blaming the guys making minimum salary. Yeah. Well, yeah, heavy is the head that wears the crown. That's for sure. Like the top guys, they need to be more consistent as well. But I think 
we we need to get something out of the the bottom of the lineup, right? Like ultimately, it is a team sport. You can't have thinking that you have a chance. You know, three innings out of the game, right? You got to have more chances than that. The bottom of the order, it feels like sometimes where, all right, these are automatic outs. Let's just fast forward through this game because they're not gonna they're not gonna get on base, right? Okay. This chat on my phone here is really small, so bear with me. I'm trying to see certain chats. I can't move through it as fast either. Uh, Matt says, Ben, you told me Nola couldn't... Oh, my battery's at 10% now. Great. Ben, you told me Nola couldn't be moved because the pitchers wouldn't allow it. Um, I think the pitchers wouldn't be happy about it, but I think as Sullivan gets more time behind the plate, the more movable he gets, if that makes sense. Like, if, because the pitchers will be more comfortable with Sullivan, right? Like, he will have more reps with these guys. He'll be more familiar with these guys. The comfort level will be there. I think, you know, early in this year, yeah, they're, they're, way, more, they're way more comfortable with Nola than they are with Brett Sullivan. So, of course... Pitchers won't be, won't be very happy with that. But again, if the dugout's calling the pitches, I see Melvin doing signs all the time to the catcher. If that's what's happening, then why should they be having Nola catch more than than Sullivan? Like, give Sullivan the shot. Might as well. They're already losing games. Might as well try it. Omar says your phone camera is at least clearer. Yeah, okay. I, I guess that's a positive. Yeah, I'm trying to load this up on my laptop and it's still not working. So it might be a little bit shorter of a show here. I apologize. Let me just get to the super chat because I want to make sure I get to these. Yeah, so just get the super chats in right now if you can. Uh, if you want to make sure, I, if you want to make sure I get to a comment before my phone dies, put it in there and I will get to it. Uh, Irie says Tatis to center field, Merrill uh, on Trent for for good outfield. DFA Nola, well Nola, I don't see him going anywhere right now uh, because Campy's not back. And if they sign Gary Sanchez, I think they'd send him to El Paso first, right? Or would they just would they just have Sullivan and Sanchez be the catching combo? And uh, I don't want to trade Jackson Merrill. Are you saying Merrill and Trent for a good outfielder? I don't want to. I don't want to trade Merrill right now, especially for an outfielder. Who is that good outfielder? Like it's easy to say, yeah, for a good outfielder, but who is that? Trade for Max Kepler? You want to give up Jackson Merrill as part of a Max Kepler trade package? No, I don't. So San Diego State. So this weekend. They were playing San Diego State softball, obviously their first super regional in San Diego State's history. And they ended up dropping today's game. They dropped yesterday. They got out to a 1-0 series lead. They had to take two out of three in the super regional if they wanted to advance. They took the first game, uh, a 4-3 win. A.J. Murphy, I love watching her play. Uh, she, man, she is a competitor. Uh, maybe I'll try to get her on the show, but... She she was super fun to watch. Their third baseman had the big uh, double to put the Aztecs ahead in game one. Gave them that 4-3 win. Uh, Allie Light, Hernandez uh, combined for seven innings. No walks in that game. Just one run um, allowed. I believe that was game one. Yeah, what a win there. And then ga game two, obviously or game two, I should say game two and game three, the offense just was not as good, not clicking as well. The pitching was not as good. There were some mental errors. There were just errors in general uh, in game three. Yesterday, a 10-1 loss. I mean, the Utah offense, you could see why they're one of the better teams in the country. Uh, they're, I mean, 10-1. to one. I mean, First inning, uh, 
there was a two run home run in the fourth. There was the grand slam that really opened it up. And it was like, all right, kind of just move, move the, the attention to game three. Obviously they didn't end up winning that game though. Um, in the fifth, there was a three run home run. Lehman, she ended up only going two innings uh, in this outing, going uh, giving up three runs, four hits. And, you know, Allie Light, like, I felt good going into today in game three about Allie Light. Like, yeah, she'll, she, he, she can get the job done. Can the offense come through with the big hits? But today, you know, Allie, she, she made kind of a mental error. She made a physical error. The first couple of runs for Utah, ground ball to her, could have got out of the inning. Maybe she went too quick bobbled the ball, and then she kind of forgot about the runner that was at second to start the play, went to third, went and scored because Allie, Allie Light had just forgot and kind of made a lazy late throw in, and that started it for Utah. Uh, and, you know, after that, you know, Salis, she had an error at shortstop. Um, Hallie Morris drove in a couple runs uh, off the bench for you to lengthen the lead for them so it, it was a disappointing ending but I, I did like the way that the San Diego State offense fought I mean they had their chance there right bases loaded in the top of the fifth right top of the fifth Murphy struck out AJ Murphy struck out with the bases loaded and there it's like all right well their best pitcher beat our our batter that we want up at the plate, at least the, the batter that I wanted up at the plate in that spot, based on just the way that things had been going in the tournament was AJ Murphy. Like that's who I want up there. They kept going and AJ ended up striking out swinging there late in the game, you know, last inning, last three outs, like down even there, like they kept fighting Julian Salise. She kept fighting, had a 10, 11 pitch at bat singled, Won that battle. Um, Murphy ended up grinding out to end the game. But they kept fighting. And I think this is only going to be a stepping stone for them. Because they have their whole starting lineup coming back next year. The broadcast was talking about that. So I'd expect this team to go out there and hopefully win the Mountain West again. Get into the regional. And hopefully come out of the regional again. But, you know, this year it was kind of like San Diego State with the basketball, right? I know... State didn't reach the women's college world series or the, the elite eight in softball as it, you know, as that's what you would call it, I guess, you know, relating it to basketball, but it was one of those things where you're like, man, they were one win away from the women's college world series. Like I don't even put San Diego state softball before this, obviously I didn't even imagine that as a possibility with the Aztecs basketball. I didn't even, I didn't imagine the final four, the national championship game as a possibility. I was hoping the Aztecs would win a couple tournament games or one tournament game. And maybe that you would label that as success because that would have been Dutcher's first program win. And here, I mean, they got to the super regional, like that's the first super regional in program history. I think the coaching staff has done a great job. You know, there, there's promise there uh, with the returning players that they have. So I'd expect a good year next year out of San Diego state softball. I think they've attracted more eyes as well, obviously playing on national television and just, Maybe just San Diegans that weren't watching this team uh, before or didn't really care a whole lot. Maybe those that watched this tournament with San Diego State, now they're like, yeah, this team, I can get behind this team. I'm going to go to some more games next year. And so I, I think this is a good thing all around for San Diego State. It's obviously, uh, yeah, it's a disappointing end, but it's just, it's a successful season. They did something that, you know, was making – the head coach, Stacy uh, Newman Denise, made her tear up going to the Super Regional after they got out of that UCLA Regional. Um, I know they didn't play UCLA, but to get out of that in LA and go somewhere where you haven't in her second year, you know, like that's a success. That that's a, so a great job out of San Diego State. Uh, at least as an Aztec fan, a future Aztec, I, I was proud uh, of the fight that they had. Uh, again, so at least they're, you know, late and, um, man, AJ Murphy, she, she's, you could just tell how much of a competitor she is. So great job out of San Diego state, the San Diego Royal, unfortunately they lost. I mean, it was a losing weekend for San Diego sports. 
the Loyal, they ended up losing to Oakland 2-0. It was one nothing for a lot of the time there. Seventh minute, Oakland got on the board. They were playing without Koke Vegas, who was the starting goalie. So we thought maybe they'd be at a disadvantage. But I thought Duran Faree did really good. I think he's 16 as the goalkeeper. I, th- I thought he did, played pretty well. Uh, they scored a late goal, but that was after the Loyal had some chances. Um, Conway had an opportunity. Guido had one off the crossbar in the 72nd minute. Around that point, around the 90th minute, uh, Domus was close. So they had their chances there. They just couldn't get it done. So, again, you know, they lost to Oakland, I think it was, in the playoffs, right? And then they can't come through there, can't get the win. So disappointing. I don't know how long Koki Vegas is going to be out, so that's something to watch for. But a disappointing loss there. Uh, But they kept fighting, you know, kind of like San Diego State softball, kept fighting. So props to them for that, you know, being down some players. And then the Wave on Friday. They did not lose. They ended up uh, getting the tie. They, they got one point away from this match. A really good crowd. The whole lower bowl was sold out. Over 18,000 fans there at Snapdragon. This was the match of the weekend. Uh, if you want to count Friday as the weekend. Wave and the Thorns. All the star power there. Uh, it was disappointing at the end because it was, a, it was a close match, right? Morgan had a chance. It was nothing, nothing for a while. Jakobsen ends up scoring. It was a tremendous patch pass from uh, Jaden Shaw. Man, Jaden Shaw is so fun to watch. Tremendous patch there. And Jakobsen was challenged by the Portland goalkeeper, Bigsby. Ends up winning that and ends up scoring because there was only a couple defenders there. Obviously not goalkeepers, so they couldn't use their hands or anything. So she ends up scoring there. Looked like the Wave were going to win. But then Portland comes back. They get a header. And it was like, really? And it was a rookie that scored too. It was uh, Reyes. Reyes for Portland in the 90th minute because there was extra time, obviously. Some stoppage time. Um, But scores on a header. The wave left her open. Gets past Sheridan. And it ended up being a draw. And So could have had three points there. And you only have one. So that's disappointing. But at least they took a point out of it. You know, the Portland, Portland Thorns, they're the defending champs. They're one of the best teams in the league, that's for sure. They have a lot of talent on that team. So you wanted to get a result. You wanted to get something out of it, right? You didn't want to walk away, especially in front of your home crowd. You didn't want to walk away with nothing. And so the way they did walk away with something, and that's at least a positive. Because, um, you know, it looked like a right, disappointing ending because you were up one nothing there at the end, thought you were going to win. But... Most of the match, it was nothing, nothing. And if it would have stayed that score, they still would have had the one point. So it's like it was like most of the match, it was tied. That's what it ended up being anyway. So you know, hopefully that makes sense. It's not like the Wave got an early goal and they, they were leading the entire time. And then last minute, you know, they end up giving up the goal. No, it was tied a lot of the match. They score late. And then, you know, a few minutes later, they gave up a goal. Um, so now... The Wave, their next match, it's a Challenge Cup match on Wednesday against O.L. Reign, which is going to be probably another tough matchup. Don't know how long some of the star players are going to be playing because it is the Challenge Cup. Last Challenge Cup match, I know that was a while ago, but against Portland, Alex Morgan barely played. Sophia Smith for Portland played like the first half. Uh, um, so not you might not see the stars for the entire match, or maybe you will because they are up for the World Cup. But Challenge Cup match on Wednesday. And then there's not another home match, I believe, until June 17th, I think, is the Angels City match. Uh, so, yeah, that's what's coming up for the Wave. Wave, look, they're a good team. They had a pretty good performance, I would say. I, their defense has been really good. i got to give props to the defense. Uh, Real, Gurma, Westfall, uh, McNabb. It's been good. Sheridan, obviously. It's been good these last few weeks. Because Orlando, the Washington games could have been better, right? But it's they bounce back. So got to get props there. Um, so hopefully they can get a win, uh, another win in the Challenge Cup part and advance to, I believe, 2-0 so far this year in the Challenge Cup. 